Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habit al-Fillah continuing on in our study of three ways uh, to forgiveness Three ways to forgiveness uh, by Ibn Rajab Studying the hadith O son of Adam As long as you call upon me and hope in me I will forgive you for whatever sins you have And I will not mind And so Ibn Rajab was talking about the three different ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants forgiveness that is obtained from this uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He mentioned that the first way was uh, to have hopeful supplication. We talked about making dua. One way you can have your sins forgiven is dua. The second way, so then the Shaykh Imam al hafiz Ibn Rajab, he says the second way, asking for forgiveness. So the first way is what? Supplication, dua. The second way is asking for forgiveness, istighfar. He said the second way to obtain forgiveness is to sincerely ask for it. And even if your sins are severe, as numerous as the clouds, as numerous as the clouds in the sky or as far as the eye can see, uh, in another narration of the same hadith, the wording is, and if you were to commit so many sins that they filled the space between the sky and the earth, and then you were to ask for Allah's forgiveness, He would forgive you. So, very important to make istighfar, kathrat istighfar, as well as we mentioned, um, and supplication in general, dua. Uh, asking for this forgiveness is to seek protection from the evil results of one's sins. And for them to be concealed. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover our faults and our sins. And to, uh, to protect us from the results of our sins. Because our sins have a result. Meaning that when you do a sin, that there is a, a, a repercussion or recompense for that sin. You will be punished for that sin. Or maybe in this life and or the next life. So sometimes a person does a sin in this life and then Allah exposes him or that person mentions their sin out in public, says, you know, yeah, I smoke weed, you know, sometimes or whatever the case may be, or the people see him smoking weed or whatever the case may be. That the point is, is that so he gets embarrassment in this life and when Allah maybe was covering his sins, the point is, is you will pay for your sins unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you that forgiveness and may Allah forgive us all of our sins, I mean. Uh, and then he mentioned, asking for forgiveness to seek protection from the evil results of one's sins and for them to be concealed. Seeking forgiveness has been mentioned many times in the Quran. <clears throat> Sometimes seeking forgiveness comes in the form of a command, like in the statement of Allah ta'ala, وَاسْتَغْفِرُ in the اللَّهَ غُفُورُ rahim," And ask forgiveness from Allah, Surely Allah is forgiving and merciful. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving because when we think about all the sins that we do and as you get older, you'll be able to write volumes of books about all the sins you committed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still gives you the chance to make tawbah, still gives you your health, still gives you your wealth, still gives you so many things, a lot of us, to, to gives us so many chances. So we have to continue to make it stuck far and make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, and as he mentioned in the ayat, so Imam Ibn Rajiv, he said, sometimes seeking forgiveness comes in the form of a command. The scholars, they mention, they say, uh, this is a principle uh, that you find in a soul of fiqh. It's a science about the foundation of fiqh principles. And it is, Al-Amr, you feed al-wujub. Wa-Nahi, you feed a tahrim which means, al-amr yufid al wujub means that when there's a command in the Qur'an, or there's a command in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu that means that that's an obligation, you must do it. Unless there's a sarif, unless there's another evidence from the Qur'an or the sunnah to show that that's not an obligation. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa aqimu salat. He, he commands you, aqimu salat. Establish the prayer, this is a command. So then we know the asl of that command is that it's an obligation. Is that it's wajib. You must make prayer. 
And there's there's no uh, exception to that. That's the asl. You know, unless there was some other evidence in the Quran or the Sunnah to show us that making prayer was not an obligation, that it was mustahab, but of course that's not the case. In this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غُفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ And seek forgiveness from Allah. Allah commands you. So, الْأَمْرِ فِي ذُو وُجُوبِ It's a command from Allah, so it's an obligation. Seeking forgiveness is an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَنِسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبُّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And seek forgiveness of your Lord and repent to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you with two things in this ayah. Uh, istighfar and making tawbah. Repent to Allah and seek forgiveness. Al-Amr yifid al-wujub. A command means it's an obligation. At other times, Allah praises those who consistently ask for His forgiveness. Well, Nusagfirina bil ashab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who seek forgiveness before dawn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walladina ida fa'alu fahishatin, O volimu and fusuhum, Vakarullaha fastagfuru, li the nubi him, Wame yagfir of the nuba illallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab and Kareem, and those who if they commit an immoral deed or wrong themselves, they remember Allah and ask for forgiveness for their sins. And who can forgive sins other than Allah? So Allah has commanded us to make tawbah and commanded us to make istighfar. And in this ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who, if they commit an immoral deed, this immoral deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions al-fahisha. Al-fahisha means like zina or adultery and these kind of acts. This shows it's a major sin. But if the person makes tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asks for forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feels sadness in their heart, is determined not to return to that, and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will forgive them. Tawbah to uh, nusuha. Tawbah to nusuha. Making sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, he says, or, oh, volimu and fusuhum. Or that they oppress themselves. How can you oppress yourself? How do you oppress yourself? Does it mean you, you know, you punch yourself? You hit yourself lap. Oppressing yourself means committing sin because those sins hurt you. They hurt your soul. They hurt you in this life and or the hereafter. So this is how you oppress, your, you oppress yourself. And other times, verses of the Quran mention that Allah forgives anyone who asks for his forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever commits an evil or wrongs himself, but then asks for Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah forgiving, merciful. Often seeking forgiveness is mentioned alongside repentance, as we we're mentioning. When it is, seeking forgiveness means to actually ask for Allah's forgiveness by the tongue, while repentance means to refrain from sinning with the heart and limbs. That's a big faida from uh, an alim, from Imam Ibn Rajib, Al Hafid Ibn Rajib. He said, again, often seeking forgiveness is mentioned alongside repentance. So some ayats, you'll find that Allah mentions, and some hadith as well, uh, you'll find that the Prophet ﷺ mentions uh, make, seeking forgiveness, istighfar, and repentance, toba. And, and Ibn Rajab says, when it is mentioned together, it show, that, that means there's a difference. And this is another qaida that we should talk about quickly. He says, when it is seeking forgiveness, means to actually ask for Allah's forgiveness by the tongue. So when they're mentioned together, it means that their meaning is different. That when, uh, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions forgiveness and uh, toba at the same time, then forgiveness means astaghfirullah on the tongue only. And toba means that it's uh, with the heart and your actions, that you're staying away from it. 
So for example, if you have a problem, you smoke cigarettes. Uh, making toba is leaving that sin. It's with your actions. You leave it and you're determined to leave it and you feel sorrow about it. And that's in the heart. And likewise, making a step far. Other times, seeking forgiveness is mentioned alone. This is a big fight. Without the mention of repentance and receiving a lost forgiveness is mentioned as the result. Such is the case with the hadith uh, that we mention and others like it. There is a, a principle the scholars mention. Uh, which means that if there are certain things that are mentioned, for, uh, like istighfar and toba, when they're mentioned together, their meaning is different. And when they're mentioned by themselves, their meaning is the same. Their, their meaning can mean the same. Istighfar means toba, and toba includes istighfar. This principle also you apply to Islam and Iman. So sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentions uh, if Iman and Islam are mentioned together, then their meanings are different. And if they're mentioned separately, then Iman includes Islam and Islam, of course, includes Iman. They're inclusive of one another. So that's a very important principle that we, you know, just for faida that to mention when you're reading the source to understand it. We'll try to be as quick as possible. He then says, it has been said that whenever seeking forgiveness is mentioned, it is understood to also include repentance. It has also been said that all the texts that mention only seeking forgiveness are general. It's the far as general. Yet are still tied to the condition mentioned in the verse of Surah Ali Imran in that there should be no insistence in continuation of the sin. So we have to be serious when we make istighfar. In this verse, Allah promises forgiveness to whoever asks for it and does not persist in committing the sin. So with this understanding, the general text mentioning seeking forgiveness are understood to be according to this condition. In other words, when someone says, O oh Allah, forgive me, he is requesting Allah's forgiveness and supplicating for it. The ruling of it is the same as any other supplication. If Allah wills, he may answer and forgive the supplicant, especially when the supplication originates from the heart that has ceased committing the sin. Or if he were made, uh, if it were made during one of the uh, one of the times that a response is certain, like before dawn or at the end of prayers, again then the response can be expected. Inshallah. A hadith narrated by Abu Huraira عنه, in uh, Bukhari and Muslim confirms this in which the Prophet والسلام, said, There was a servant who committed a sin and then said, My Lord, I have sinned, so forgive me. Allah Ta'ala replied, My servant knows he has a Lord who forgives sins and takes them to account. I have forgiven my servant. Then a period of time passed, a period of time passed as Allah willed and he sinned again. The man asked for forgiveness and Allah forgave him. But then after some time, he sinned again. He said, my Lord, I've committed another sin, so forgive it. He replied, my servant knows he has a Lord who forgives sins and takes them to account. I have forgiven my servant. Then another period of time passes, Allah willed, and he committed another sin. He said, my Lord, I have sinned again, so forgive it. Allah replied, my servant knows he has a Lord who forgives sins takes them to account. I have forgiven my servant for the third time, then adding, so let him do as he pleases. The meaning, Ibn Rajib says, he will be forgiven as long as he continues in this state. Whenever he sins, he simply but sincerely asks Allah for forgiveness. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives sin. And the Prophet said, Adam All the children of Adam make mistakes or, or commit sin. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. So this shows us the importance of repentance. And this shows us that we all make sins and we all make mistakes. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik la man yasha. Verily Allah, uh, inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi. Verily Allah doesn't forgive that you commit shirk with him. Wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik la man yasha. And he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins. Uh, Ibn Rajab then said, apparently it is understood that his asking for forgiveness is without insisting on or intending to commit the same sin again. So it's important that when we, we ask for this forgiveness, we shouldn't have intention to go back. We shouldn't be like, Astaghfirullah, you know, I, I, I drank this alcohol, I'm drunk, or now I'm sober and I'm making this stuff far. Uh, I'm probably, I know Friday's coming up, I'm going to get drunk again. You know, they shouldn't have the intention to commit the sin again. We sincere Toba is to sincerely remove yourself uh, from that sin. So seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wajib and it's something we should strive to do and try to make it in our heart, in our tongues, in our limbs and leave the sin. Then he said, as for someone asking forgiveness just with the tongue, while the heart is still intent on committing the sin again, this is merely a supplication. If Allah wills, he may forgive him, otherwise he may not. So it still gives us hope, walillah alhamd. That doesn't mean we should despair and give up. Even if we know we're stuck in some rut, we're stuck with a sin. Still make, you know, a sub for Allah and feel sorrow and try, try, you know. But you should have a sincere uh, uh, repentance to leave that sin. But at least make it sub far and be sincere with your sub far. Uh, and and uh, hope in hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid you in leaving that sin or make it easy for you. Uh, then he said, it may be that his insistence upon committing the same sin could become the very factor that prevents his supplication from being answered. So it's it's a d deep thing. Uh, in Imam Ahmed's Al Muslim, there is a hadith of Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, uh, who said. He said, Let the insistent sinners beware. Those who insist on committing sins, they did while they know. Meaning that they know they're doing sins and they keep doing it. They keep doing it and they... Uh, you know, even though they might ask istighfar. So we don't know. Sometimes our sins are the reasons for our du'as not getting accepted. And the sins can be a, 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 a means of keeping your risk, keeping you from getting risk and provision. So then he said, so the complete way to ask, seek forgiveness, the way that assures forgiveness is done by also not committing the sin again. Allah has praised such people and promised them forgiveness. Undoubtedly, the best way to ask forgiveness of Allah is by not insisting on the sin. In this way, the servant is hopeful of a true, sincere repentance. If he says only by his tongue, I seek forgiveness from Allah, while his heart has not fully renounced the sin, he is merely calling upon Allah to forgive him without actual repentance. This is still good, though, because it is hoped he will also be answered. So Ibn Rajab has given us some fawaid because sometimes you hear from other ulama that say, no, this is just lip service and it has no benefit. But in fact, we don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how his mercy is. He's so merciful because look how many people have come away from the worst sins. A, a, a true story, I know someone, and I won't mention from a particular country, when he came to America as a student, he used to do a lot of bad sins. Even I met a woman I went to the university with and I talked to her about Islam and she was far away from Islam but she said oh my boyfriend is a Muslim and he prays subhanallah after a certain amount of time this woman became a Muslim and I went to college with her and I didn't even I never really gave her dawah she knew I was a Muslim but I never gave her dawah really you know she just knew I was a Muslim and I did certain things and I didn't do certain things and whatever but she became a Muslim, Muslim, mashallah, and they married, alhamdulillah. So this was a kind of khair, but the point is, is that sometimes uh, that people do sins and they make istighfar and we don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
works. How even out of that sinfulness and out of something that's bad, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings good. We don't know. And it's possible for any of us to make toba to Allah to come back to him. As long as we're not on our deathbed and our death and, de and our soul is being taken from us. As for someone who repents with false repentance, this is not real repentance as some people believe. True repentance is not possible unless one stops committing the sin. When someone says, I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him, then there are two possible scenarios. First, his heart is still insistent upon committing the sin. In this case, he is lying in a statement, I repent to you, because he actually is not repentant. So it is not... So it is wrong for him to say of himself that he is repenting while in fact he is not. The second scenario, he has given up the sin with his heart and does not insist upon doing it. That's real repentance. The people that differed with regarding to the permissibility of one who continues to insist upon the sin, saying, I repent to Allah, a group of the pious predecessors, meaning the Salaf, they disliked it and they are the companions of Abu Hanifa, radiallahu ta'ala, rahimahullah ta'ala. This is reported from them by Imam at tahawi Arabi ibn Khayyam said that in person statement, I repent to Allah while continuing the sin is a lie, even another sin. Instead, he should say, O oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness, so forgive me without claiming repentance. So this is what one of the Salaf said. Again, this is the case of someone who has not totally stopped committing the sin. His heart has not completely renounced it. So it's better for him to say istighfar instead of istighfarullah wa atubu ilayk, I repent to you because he's not really repenting. But he, he does feel sorrow and he wants forgiveness from Allah. Muhammad ibn Soqa <clears throat> used to say when asking forgiveness, I ask forgiveness from Allah the Magnificent, other than whom there is no God, the ever living, the controller of everything. And I ask him for sincere repentance. It is reported that Hudayfa said, it is sufficient enough as a lie for someone to say, I seek Allah's forgiveness, yet he keeps returning to the same sin. Mutharif once heard a man saying, I seek forgiveness from Allah, and I repent to him. So he was irritated and said, perhaps you should not say this. So this shows us how the Salaf were. The Salaf were very strong in their worship, and they were very serious about the religion. Uh, by this, it may be understood that it is disliked by some that one should say, I repent to Allah. This may be because true, sincere repentance is one in which the repentant never returns to commit the sin again. Therefore, if he does commit the same sin again, then at that time, his statement, I repent to you, would in fact become a lie. Meaning that he didn't really have a true intention to make uh, repentance. Likewise, uh, Muhammad ibn Ka'b al-Qurazi uh, was asked about a person vowing to Allah that he would never disobey again, uh, disobey him again. To this he replied, who would be a worse sinner than such a person? He swears an oath to Allah that his decree will never be carried out upon him. Abu al-Faraj ibn al Josi supported his statement in this and it's been reported that Sufyan ibn uh, uh, Ayana made a similar statement. Despite all of this, the majority of scholars are still of the opinion that it's permissible for the repentant servant to say, I repent to Allah while continuing a sin. So most of the scholars have this view that it's okay to still say that, to say, even if they still are doing a sin. However, a group of the Salaf, some of the Salaf, the classical scholars, dislike that. Okay? They said, and some said it was even impermissible. So, and then he said, and he may also promise Allah to never return to a particular act of disobedience because such a determination and intention is already obligated upon him in the first place, the intention not to sin. For this determination, Allah said to the one who kept returning to sins, I have forgiven my servant, so let him do as he pleases. Because this person kept doing sins and then they made toba to Allah or istighfar and Allah forgave him. Then they went and they did the sin again. And then Allah forgave them. And then they did the sin again. So the important thing is to come back to Allah. And of course it's important to leave the sins. To be sincere about leaving the sins. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And we'll continue on in the dars the next time.